Hi, my name is Mike Gabin, and welcome to Making History Mission 2. Yeah, I started this series, well, now I'm going to call it a series now that we have a second video. I made the first video without the idea, well, I wasn't sure if I was going to go on and keep making more of these, but that first video where I went through Mission 1 seemed to be uh, a little bit popular, so I thought, you know, why don't I go through Mission 2 and keep going with these? So what we're doing in this series, as I sort of implied just there, is that we are going through the... Uh, missions that are built into the Making History DLC that's available for Kerbal Space Program version 1.4. And last time we went through Dawn of the Space Age, and actually I was, uh, was we got these different levels here, bronze, silver, and gold, and uh, on the video I got a bronze, I actually had at that time gotten a silver, and you can see here I went back and kept playing until I got the gold, uh, yeah, kind of had to do that. <laughs> um, whether I'm going to get a gold on the next mission or not, we'll have to wait and see. Um, you know, it's not that hard to get the gold. You, you just save. <laughs> That's all you got to do is is you know, good use of uh, some quick saves and uh, you can retry things once you understand what the parameters are of the missions. Anyway, let's go into the next one. Trouble in the Void. Uh, I've already done it once. I got a silver on the first time round. I think there... You know what? I'm, I'll, I'll talk about it as it comes up. As to, I think, I'm starting to wrap my head around the parameters of all of these things. But what we're going to do is we're going to reset this. We're going to go through it again. This one's actually quite a bit shorter than the first one. So this should be a shorter video. Okay, mission briefing. This mission is all about how well you perform under pressure. Or lack thereof. Ah, uh, I get it. Pre oh, never mind. You've made it to orbit in the Valscod 2 on one of our first crewed missions, but something's about to go terribly wrong. Oh, Gene, you know, if you knew it was going to go wrong, why'd you send us up here? Oh, we're in. Valscod 2, can, uh, can, can you hear us? Our computers report a massive cascading electrical failure on your craft. Stay calm. There's nothing to worry about. On a completely unrelated note, will you run a crew report so we can monitor your vitals? You'll need to hurry. We may not have much time. I mean, it should be fine. <laughs> anyway, we're here, and uh, this is the interior of one of the new capsules. It's uh, kind of, I, I, I don't know, it's kind of neat. I like this, uh, um, you can't look out the windows. That's one thing I kind of don't like about it. But I do like the look of it. It's obviously modeled after the sort of Voskhod uh, type capsules from the early Soviet program in the in the 60s, but I like this graduation they put on on here for helping you determine attitude by looking out the window. <laughs> and and I, I, I giggle about it, but actually that that was done, so that's why I like it. Anyway, let's get out of cockpit mode here. Take a look at this thing. Yeah, this capsule here is the KV-2P reentry module. Uh, yeah. One of our one of the new parts that comes with the DLC. Um, are there other new parts in here? I this is a new part. This service module down here, um, the SM-6A service module. Um, if you enable the cutaway view, I haven't played with this in sandbox mode, but you can obviously hide stuff in here. That I like. I like that ability to hide st things away. Uh, that looks really nice. Um, I didn't build this. This is what actually makes this mission a little bit quicker um, than the previous mission. You don't have to build the vessels. It just gives you the vessels that you're playing with. Our other vessel we got going here ooh, is uh, this guy, and it's moving away from us. So let's get going. Uh, let's see here. we got to do a crew report, as I recall. So crew report. Don't panic. The good news is your vitals are okay. Well, for now. The bad news is, well, everything else. But don't worry. Our engineers have a plan, sort of. There's a communication satellite nearby, the new SWM-94. It's designed to stay in orbit for a long time, so it has its own maintenance terminal. If you board the SWM-94, you can completely reset Val's computers, which should fix the problem. You'll need to EVA Tom Ford. Tom Ford down here we have. Over once, you, once you're close enough, get ready. Get to the satellite before the ship starts failing. And actually, here we go. Whoa! <laughs> this is what they mean by failing. Things are exploding. But to be honest, I found the easiest thing is I'm going to take this 
crew report that we did. And we're going to boot, boot Comfort over there. Rather than um, uh, flying the vessel over, we'll fly Comfort over. Why not? And while Comfort's making his way over here, look. A little bit of difference in the suit textures and uh, <laughs> in, the, in the helmets. Um, that looks kind of nice. Okay, here. Getting close. We shouldn't. Up a little bit, a little bit to the left, I think. Getting close here. Shouldn't have maybe spent so much time talking. <laughs> Yeah, it's nice to have some extra little textures in your room. Start putting on the brakes a little bit. And this satellite has an unusual thing in that it has a, another crew module on it. I don't know why you build a satellite with a crew module on it, but this one does. And I gotta find the hatch. I'm not 100% whoa, get down of where the hatch is. So I just go up to it. Oh! There we go. Got it. Great. Okay, so let's board. Okay, great. You've made it. Transmitting a crew report will initiate a reboot for some reason. So, okay, we will review our stored data and we will transmit that. And that is done. Rebooting now. You've made it. Well done. We're sending the reboot message now. And yes, it looks like your engines are back online and the cascading has quit. Are you ready for the next bit of bad news? The electrical failure fried valve systems pretty well. So one of you will ha need to land the SWM-94. Good thing we equipped our satellites to deorbit, huh? Land as much of the Vascod as you, oh, as much, okay, sorry. I just realized something. Land as much of the Vascod as you can near the KLKSC so we can do a post-mortem on it. Um, I thought they wanted me to land as much of this satellite as I could, but it's the Valscott. Okay, that explains why I might have gotten a silver. I'll get to that in a little bit. So what we need to do is, for some reason, we need to land this, and we need to land the Valscott, which is back there. Um, there's one thing that's kind of, I find, this thing's got docking ports, as you can see. There, there are... Uh, Clampatron docking ports on here. And if we go back, there's an another new part here. There is this crew hatch, which has a docking ring type of thing on it. And in fact, if you click that, look at that. Ooh, so sort of a mating tube there. I, I, I think that's really cool. And uh, this is equipped with a little bit of monopropellant and also some RCS. But, um... I found out after trying to dock these things, which I naturally tried to do even though the mission doesn't ask you to do it, is that, um, well, they won't mate. <laughs> this will not connect to the Clampatron Juniors. There are different sizes. So, although that's there for some strange reason, at least I couldn't determine why. So what we're going to do is we're going to fly both of these down to the KSC. So, uh, this guy... I'm going to try and put down the water. Now, actually, one thing before we get down there, the time constraints are now off. I can relax a little bit. We have these engines here, but the engine exhausts are being blocked by this piece right here. So you have to actually, before you can fire the uh, fly, you have to disgage it. And in the staging, they actually did us a little bit of a help here by... Um, uh, putting these both on the same stage. So if I just stage here, that goes away, and now my engines are active. But make sure that that does go away, or else this thing won't fly. Okay. So um, as you can see, electricity is not going to be an issue on this. In fact, it's got a pretty high-level probe body in there somewhere because I got all of my um, various autopilots here. Tom, our comfort here is only a p level one pilot, so. I don't know where the probe body's hiding. Is that it there? No, I don't know. I don't care. I've got to get down to the surface. So we got to get this down to the surface. And what I'm going to do is, I don't want it to all, this obviously doesn't look like something that's going to land on land too successfully. So I'm going to try and put it into the water. So what we're going to do is we're going to time warp around to the other side of the planet. Yeah, it's too bad those two docking ports weren't 
compatible. I wish they put compatible docking ports because I, I tried to dock them and it was very obvious that the two rings are of a different size. Alrighty. That looks pretty good. Lock you onto retrograde. Take a quickie look and make sure we're not. What's that? That is our crap. And uh, that's the valve scott over there. Okay, so we're not going to drive into the valve scott. I always like to check that thing. Okay. And here I'm going to do a quick save, which is what I started to do because I am going to see if I can get gold this time. We'll see how it goes. And we'll just burn until our periapsis is, oh, I don't know. Let's see. That's good. I don't think I have to come really close to the KSC, but I do want to end up in the water because of the shape of this thing. We obviously are going to retract these solar panels before we enter, so I'm going to pin these over to the side here. And there's still a fair amount of fuel in this. So if we need to sort of do any more burns, we are able to do that. Okay, let's time warp. You may have also noticed since the last time, the last video, I have installed Kerbal Engineer um, to help me out because Kerbal Engineer is awesome. Let's retract these solar panels. Boink and boink. There we go. Um... I find Kerbal Engineers, the one mod that I really find, I mean, uh, awkward, especially when you're building vessels, it's great to have this extra data. So we got this extra data and it allows me as well to spend more time here outside of map view where things are clearly, clearly much more pretty. All right, speed this up. And I can see I'm going to come short, so yippee ki -yay, let's <laughs> take out our quick save. This is why I did the quick save. And we'll take a look at this. All right, so again, retrograde. Last time I went to 35 kilometers, so this time I'll go to, I don't know, let's call it. 43, yeah, 42, 40, about 43 kilometers. I really find trying to land in un, with unfamiliar vessels and trying to put them down accurately to be very, very awkward. That or I suck. It's always a possibility. I'm pretty sure if you put this thing down on the ground that uh, things would not go well. Another thing coming from Kerbal Engineer, why I like Kerbal Engineer so much, it's telling me what my hottest part is from the re-entry. It's the, not surprisingly, Gigantor solar panels, but they're only at about 58%, so uh, they're not near exploding. They explode at 100%, so we're all doing okay that way. I don't need these windows anymore. Let's get rid of those. All right, we are coming down, waiting. Oh, parachute! Now I'm going to point this prograder. At least try to. It's whoa! I'm still time warped. <laughs> try to sort of point a prograder there. Let's deploy because I knew. Now we'll just turn off the SAS. I knew that the parachutes are at the back, so I thought I'd come around in a more controlled way rather than um, you know let the parachutes take care of that. I thought that'd be more gentle on the vehicle. Okay, now we'll just time warp down to the. Water, not too far from the KSC. All right. And splash down. All right, what do we got here? Ah, another happy landing. Now bring the rest of the crew in the valve. And we're not going to recover because I've had bad experiences with that. Uh, messing up the mission, so I'm going to just simply go to, oh no we're not, I'm not going to go to the Space Center, we can get there, come back, there we go, get here, map view, go up to Jeb, in the Val, that doesn't sound right, okay, here we are in the Val, and I'm going to quick save once again, 
Go back to map view. I want to be, there's a waypoint here, you can see it. We got to be within 25 kilometers of that waypoint. They also want us to, um, to, uh, did up dump to uh, bring as much of this ship down as we can. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna time warp, here, let's get on here, to the same spot every time. I'm gonna time warp to, let's go here, right above, whoops, not a node, silly. Time warp, warp to here. And um, right above the alternate launch site, the Woomerang launch site, cool. Now, the Valskod has no electrical, the electrical systems are messed up. So if you put on SAS, you can't, it doesn't do anything because there's no reaction wheels. But you do have RCS and monoprop. So if you put on RCS, and let's put us on retrograde because Jeb is a level one pilot here. And also turn on our engine. And I'm going to bring this down to, let's see here. Let's go with 25 kilometers. Let's see how this goes. Okay, come back to here. We're going to turn off the RCS and the SAS. Just let this thing tumble. Uh, it is using up a little bit of electricity right now because of the lights, but there's actually a fair amount of battery storage, so we don't have to worry about that. So I guess they just gave us the RCS for, whoops, we are here, so TR, uh, let's go back, put on retrograde, there we go. You can turn that off, because I'm pretty sure this thing is going to orient itself this way anyway. We're definitely going to want to put it into the water because we want to bring down as much of this vessel as we can. There are, um, ooh, that should bring the parachute down to here so that we don't do any staging. There is some staging in here and we can lose the service module and stuff like that, but uh, I think one of the requirements is to come down as close as we can to it. And I don't know how well this thing's going to carry through the atmosphere. It's, it's certainly heavier than just simply descending the pod by itself. So, um, although there will be a fair amount of drag because of all of these sort of radial parts coming off of it, there also will be uh, a fair lot of momentum. And I can see right now we are going to come very, very, very short. Yes, we are. So... We're back. We'll try this again. Now, one of the things um, I was talking about, lat, there's this parameter on here called test accuracy. In the last episode, I was guessing that this had to do with getting really close to the orbital parameters, which obviously can't be right. Um because there are no orbital parameters to hit this time. The only thing that has anything to do with accuracy is landing close to the KSC. And it says the accuracy has to be greater than 50%. Now, I'm supposed to be within uh, 25 kilometers of a waypoint that's coming up. So 50% of 25 is 12 and a half. Does that mean that to get this, I have to be within 12 and a half kilometers? I, I, I really don't know. I don't quite know what that means. And if anybody out there knows what this means, this test accuracy, well, please share. <laughs> I've done a little bit of Googling and a little bit of looking around on the forums. I couldn't find anybody really talking about this. All right, how are we doing? Hmm? Hmm? Maybe? We'll see. Here's our waypoint. 
The waypoint's actually not on the KSC. It's in the hills and behind the KSC, which is really rather kind of annoying. I am overshooting. I can see that. So fire up the engines here. Oh, I don't know now. Now I'm not so sure. Oh, I'm... No, 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 no. Maybe shouldn't have done that. We're not landing in the water. Let's deploy. We're going to be on the shore, on the ground here. We're within nine kilometers now. Come on, parachute. Deploy all the way, please. I got a lot of weight. Ah! Okay. Oh, I'm still in that boat. Okay, well, let's see what happens here. I wanted to land in the water, but I'm nice and close, that's for sure. Kerbal Engineer, of course, is telling me how close I am from the terrain, which is handy. So I'm going to stop the time warping when I get close here. Oh, well, the lights are coming off the shore, too. Okay, here we go, Jeb. Hang on. This might be a little bit bumpy. Oh, oh, oh. Just broke the engine. Just broke the engine. Stop rolling. There we go. And that's a gold. Woohoo! So I think that had to do with just getting within. I'm not guaranteed of that, but I'm thinking that's getting within this accuracy to get the goal because I was within 50% of the 25 kilometers. I'm hoping that then again, nothing's checked off, is it? I don't know. <laughs> Either way, goal! Hooray! So, saying quick. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. So see me again next time when I try and do Mission 3.